Hello everyone, Faceif here and welcome back to the stream. Today we're going to be playing some of the Beginner's Guide. Uh, from what I understand, it's a pretty short game, uh, upwards of two hours. Uh, so we're going to think of something to do afterwards. However, uh, since today's Thursday, didn't want to start a new series and have three days off. So we're going to stick with it. And as you can see, I have a very needy pupper right here with me. Uh, she decided to pop up as the stream was starting and has uh, been hanging out and booping all over my hand for like the last three minutes trying to get me to pet her and stuff, huh? Huh, you stinky stink. Hello, you. Here, let's move this. This toy. There, you're gonna make all sorts of mess here and all sorts of problem. But uh, let's get on into this. I've never played it before. This is gonna be a blind play, but I've heard it's really fun experience, so. Let's go. Well, you guys are probably going to hear some uh, upper chomping here soon. Your audio is on. Yes, yes, indeed. Controls, okay. Really, doggo? Oh, I need to check Twitch real quick. Just to make sure things are looking okay. Again, made some changes because... Woo, loud. Uh, things that I had going on yesterday, two days ago. Uh, the stream looked fine, but the recordings was awful. So, uh, it looks smooth, so we'll keep up with it. These games mean a lot to me. Uh, oh shit. I met Coda print, in early print. 2000. We're gonna... Hi there. Thank you very much for playing the... Crap. It restarted it after I said restart it. I mean... Nice face of. That's what it does. But uh it didn't immediately restart it after I said restart it. Alright, begin the game. Hi, Popper. Oh good doggo. Anyway, new to the stream, this is Jada. The chomping noises you hear is from Mamas. She's Thank right over there. Thank you very much for playing the beginner's guide. Outside the screen. My name is Davy Reedon. I wrote hey, Stanley Davey. Parable. And while oh, that I love game that game. Tells a pretty absurd story. Today, I'm going to tell you about a series. Of I didn't know that. That he happened wrote this. between cool. 2008 and 2011. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now, these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff, and his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for oh, Counter-Strike. You can walk oh, around here, level. by the way. And uh, Whoa, mostly it's just dude. Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. But what I like is that even though he's... Okay, it pauses it. That's good. Sensitivity. Pew. That might be a little too low. It feels better. The God damn it. Town. I just said quit again. <laughs> Alright, third time's charm. Dog was probably gonna be getting a lot of pet in here today. Come on, dog boys. Got eye boogies. Let's fix that. Gross. Hi there. Thank you very much for playing The Beginner's Guide. My name is Davey Reedon. I wrote The Stanley Parable. And while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff. And his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this for is, I think, the first the game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. And uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. Neat. What I like is that even though he starts from the simple the aesthetic of a desert exploded. town... He then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. Yeah, and of course, that. it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, 
and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This is what Hanging I like about there? all of Coda's games. I mean, Whoa. not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So, it's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, a shiny one. makes them, and then immediately abandons them, and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point, he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. So, yeah. you know, this was Important just how he games worked. Folder. He That's tended funny. to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made until suddenly one day, he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game, and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. Is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage cool. him to start creating again. And it's if kind the of people like you who play homage. this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. That's cool. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Oh. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made that's in crazy that he's 2008. That's crazy that he's compiled all the games into this game and have them loaded up. Whoa. Whisper machine. Whoa, gun. That's a cool gun. Evacuate immediately. This game is called Escape from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. There's no crosshair. Can't go that way. Okay. Uh, there's no reload button. There's no ammo indication. Just uh, running through. Okay. Security call breach. Hostile alien life form inbound. Wait, am I the breach? It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid development. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. Uh, uh, just notice that. But ultimately, we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. Oh, I can't get in and there. I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Enemy oh, hey. Begin Enemy force neutralized. I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. Ah, that's awesome. Listen to this. I like this sound here. That's cool. It actually is surround sound. That's funny. That's awesome. Hey, Mickey, what's going on? Yeah, this is the time that uh, I'm off work and I'm able to stream. It's actually still pretty early in the evening for me. It's seven o'clock here. How you doing? Welcome to the stream. We're going to be playing kind of a story game. Oh, hey, check Apparently, it out. Apparently, this space station has a labyrinth on it. I was I, just going to say that. <laughs> sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just going to skip you on past it. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Thanks, sir. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. It's four there? Holy cow. All right, can I go in here now? Oh, here we go. Hey, Check it out. There, in the engine room. You could save us all. That beam is powering a whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing... It's not supposed to be powering it? If you... Your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, 
Oh, I could save everyone. Could you give yourself? That's cool. He's he's giving you that choice there. It's four there, man. If you're feeling like a zombie, go to sleep. Don't feel like you got to stay here. I appreciate you being here, this but man, crash out Unfortunately, if you need. The only option is to step into the beam. All right. Yeah. Got zapped. Let me pause here for a second. Have you seen it? What you just it looked interesting. Stepping into the beam and then dying is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. What happened? Whoa! Whoa! Ha ha ha! Oh, cool. Actually, that's awesome. You get to see the, the labyrinth. causes you to start floating. And this is an important that's moment cool. more. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place, juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, that maze looks know. very calming uh, I have no idea for some reason. Thinking, but hey Doggo, you're making, making loud bite this, noises. Something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. I think it's really cool that all the games are included in this game. That's awesome. The past was behind here. Yep. In this I can't game, move forward. Can only walk backwards. Oh, that's wild. Holy crap, that's weird. Oh man, that's amazing. This is cool. Oh, it's so weird because I'm used to like when I'm walking down hallways normally like forward in games I'm always checking like left and right and you can't do that here because then you're gonna run into stuff Whoa, So it's a but the short and be relatively seen. minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative Keep changing. Oh, it is look. less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused more complete Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing It's clear track. Stops and looks Cool. Oh, I didn't read that. Will she find the strength to confront it? It's a short little thought. It says what it wants to say, and oh. then it ends. Okay, it we're done, I guess. More than that, which to me is why it works because it gets out quick. Okay, next one. Oh, don't be a scary game, please. Oh, I can't go anywhere. I only can move forward. You are now entering. I can only stay on the path. And that's it. What? Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games, and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. Okay. That was weird. Oftentimes, Koda would put bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. Cool. Uh, make sh uh, be sure to I tell me if you're seeing stream lag too. I would games. appreciate that. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you gonna do? And jump off the edge? Nope. Cool, appreciate it. I, it's I made some more tweaks. Nothing over here. Sorry. Oh, that's funny. I'm guessing there's nothing around here either. So he announced at the beginning, this is the same guy that does uh, Stanley Parable. And that game is super fun. I guess I wouldn't say super fun, but it, it has a very interesting concept. And I enjoyed it. Yeah, this is just going to be a... Yeah, it's just empty. Okay. Gotta know. The one thing.